The end of the commercial production era of the Boeing 747, a plane once hailed as the queen of the skies and an icon of civil aviation, was officially marked in 2023. However, for a very special customer, this ending was just a new chapter in the story of survival and irreplaceable roles the United States military. From Air Force One to the Doomsday Plane, the Queen of the Skies continues to be reborn and operate in new capacities. But why does the Air Force still rely on an aging aircraft like the Boeing 747? Does this give the plane any hope of making a comeback in civil aviation? Let's find out. When Air Force One touches down at Andrews Air Force Base, the sunlight glinting off the glossy paint of the Boeing 747 leaves anyone watching in awe. It is a living symbol of power strategy and a glorious history of civil aviation. Remarkably, even though the civilian world has said farewell to the 747, this queen of the skies continues to exist and is more vital than ever in the hands of the United States military. The U.S. Air Force USAF is currently working to acquire used 747-8s to retrofit and employ them for highly critical strategic missions. At first glance, this might seem illogical, a bulky, costly aircraft that is no longer in production. But a closer look reveals a smart move, only the 747's fuselage is large enough and capable enough to undertake the most sensitive missions in the Air Force's arsenal. By 2025, the importance of this jumbo jet is evident through two key programs replacing the presidential aircraft VC-25B, or Air Force One, and maintaining strategic nuclear command capabilities via the E-4B doomsday plane. With the procurement of new aircraft becoming unfeasible, the USAF turned to the used aircraft market, but not randomly. Each 747 is carefully selected, becoming an indispensable platform for life-or-death missions. Beyond being a strategic platform, the Boeing 747 has also served as a massive flying laboratory. It has been used for groundbreaking experiments from the airborne laser system YAL-1 to concepts of airborne aircraft carriers. Today, the U.S. Air Force operates six jumbo jets, two VC-25A for VIP transport, and four E-4B Nightwatch aircraft airborne command centers for strategic operations. Though small in number, their power and role shocked the world. Yet, if there is any aircraft in the world that carries more power symbolism and responsibility than any other, it is Air Force One. And now the future of this flying fortress rests on the VC-25B, an upgraded version built on the Boeing 747-8 Intercontinental Airframe, the final and most advanced wide-body aircraft Boeing has ever produced. Looking back, the current VC-25A, though commonly referred to as Air Force One, is actually based on the Boeing 747-200B platform, a design from the 1970s. Even though it has been enhanced with a wide range of defensive capabilities such as aerial refueling, electromagnetic pulse protection, hardened wiring, and missile countermeasures, it still carries a worrying truth it is more than 35 years old. With each passing year, sourcing parts for the middle-aged aircraft becomes increasingly difficult, and the reliability of the aircraft responsible for transporting the President of the United States has begun to show alarming signs of strain. That is why in 2015 the USAF had to choose the 747-8 as the replacement. Two whitetail dash 8s originally built for Transaero, but never delivered after the airline went bankrupt, were selected as the foundation for the VC-25B. At first this was seen as a cost-saving solution, but the reality turned out to be far more complex. Why? Because to transform a civilian aircraft into an airborne White House, the U.S. Air Force must dissect, strip down, and rebuild almost everything the entire wiring system must be replaced with military-grade components. Highly secure communication systems must be integrated, and numerous classified defensive measures must be added. This led to contract disputes, the impacts of the pandemic, and most importantly, Boeing's internal issues during system integration. Actually, the plan to replace Air Force One has been in motion for years. In 2016, under the Obama administration, Boeing was awarded a $3.9 billion contract to build two specially customized Boeing 747-8 aircraft to serve as the next generation of the presidential fleet. It was a monumental project, but one that soon faced wave after wave of technical challenges, cost issues and delays pushing it far behind its original schedule. These setbacks prompted President Trump to publicly voice his frustration with Boeing, even suggesting that the administration might buy a plane or own a plane or do something to solve the problem. The result, the VC-25B program has faced constant delays and escalating costs. This delay is more than an inconvenience. It creates a strategic vulnerability. The aging VC-25As are approaching retirement while the VC-25B won't be ready until 2027, or even later. 
That means the United States risks having no flying fortress capable of meeting national-level mission requirements during a dangerous gap in capability. Therefore, the USAF was forced to act. The solution is to acquire an additional used 747-8. But this is when an unexpected gift emerged, a super-luxury VIP 747-8 from the government of Qatar. However, the contradiction is that is it legal to accept such a gift from a foreign government? In the United States, accepting gifts from foreign governments is an extremely sensitive legal matter and can even be illegal. The U.S. Constitution, through the Foreign Emoluments Clause, was designed to prevent government officials from accepting gifts or benefits from foreign governments in order to avoid conflicts of interest and undue influence. The clause explicitly states no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall without the consent of the Congress accept of any present emolument office or title of any kind whatever from any king prince or foreign state. Democratic lawmakers and independent watchdog groups immediately raised objections to the acceptance of the aircraft arguing that it may violate this clause. While the Trump administration claimed that the gift was intended for the Department of Defense and would go through the appropriate legal processes, the fact remains that President Trump was personally stated that he would be stupid to turn down such a valuable gift, adding that it could be quickly converted for presidential use. The issue is further complicated by the ongoing trade and diplomatic negotiations between the United States and Qatar. Accepting a gift of such significant value could be perceived as an attempt by Qatar to gain influence or curry favor with the U.S. administration, whether intentional or not. Although there is no direct evidence of a quid pro quo, the mere appearance of a conflict of interest was enough to raise red flags. In this case, whether the U.S. Congress approved remains unclear. Typically, for a federal official to accept a gift from a foreign government, explicit congressional authorization is required. The Trump administration's decision to bypass or reinterpret this clause set a troubling precedent and raised serious concerns about transparency and accountability. But nothing luxurious survives once it enters the military world. This aircraft must be completely stripped of its interior, all wiring replaced encrypted communication systems, integrated military-grade avionics, installed self-defense equipment, added and transformed from a Royal VIP jet into a command center capable of surviving a nuclear war. The decision to acquire an existing airframe not only reflects the USAF's pragmatism, it also underscores the absolute importance of Air Force One. There can be no gaps, not even a single day, in the President's ability to travel and maintain strategic command. When the world descends into chaos, the President must always have an aircraft that can be airborne within 15 minutes fly for many hours and survive the worst-case scenarios. And as of today, no platform is more suitable than the Boeing 747-8 airframe. If Air Force One is a symbol of power and prestige, the E-4B, the doomsday plane, is a symbol of survival. In the most extreme situations when ground command centers are destroyed, electromagnetic pulses strike, or even a nuclear attack occurs, the E-4B becomes the only remaining brain to coordinate the entire U.S. military. This aircraft, officially called the National Airborne Operations Center, is designed to carry the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and senior military political leaders into the sky, where they can continue to run the country under any catastrophic scenario. To fulfill this survival role, the E-4B is heavily reinforced. It is hardened against nuclear radiation, electromagnetic pulses, and jamming, while providing enough space to house all communications equipment, protected computers, and work areas for a large command team. It is, in essence, a mobile command center where every strategic decision can be made even when everything on the ground has collapsed. However, the platform of the Doomsday Plane is no longer new. Based on the Boeing 747-200, the first E-4B were built in the 1970s and last upgraded in the 1980s. After nearly half a century, these aircraft faced difficult maintenance and scarce spare parts creating significant risks for continuous operational capability. To secure the future, the U.S. Air Force launched the SAOC program aiming to replace the E-4B with a modern E-4C based on the Boeing 747-8 airframe, similar to the VC-25B platform. This is a crucial step to maintain airborne strategic command and control capabilities for decades to come. In 2024, the SAOC contract was awarded to Sierra Nevada Corporation, which quickly acquired five jumbo jets previously operated by Korean Air for refurbishment. These aircraft underwent a comprehensive overhaul interiors, were reconfigured for strategic command missions, military communication systems, integrated electromagnetic pulse and nuclear shielding added, and aerial refueling capability installed a vital feature the previous E-4B lacked. 
Although flight testing began in early 2025, the new E4C is not expected to enter service until 2032, underscoring the complexity and secrecy of the program. The choice of the Boeing 747-8 is not just a technological decision, it is a survival strategy. Sharing a platform with the VC-25B simplifies logistics training and maintenance, while the enormous space of the 747-8 allows for all the equipment work areas and communication systems required for nuclear missions. Additionally, acquiring used airframes is a pragmatic solution avoiding the cost and risk of ordering a completely new aircraft from scratch. So why does the Air Force continue to rely on an aging airframe? Although the commercial aviation market has shifted toward more fuel-efficient twin-engine aircraft like the Boeing 777 or 787, the United States Air Force USAF remains steadfast in its choice of the jumbo jet for its most critical missions. This decision is not driven by nostalgia, but by the unique technical requirements that only the Queen of the Skies can meet. The greatest advantage of the 747-8 lies in its enormous interior volume. Unlike ordinary passenger jets, both the VC-25B and E-4B serve as airborne command and control centers. The VC-25B must accommodate the President's office living quarters, secure conference rooms, and a medical facility. Even more demanding, the E-4B requires vast space to house complex C-4ISR systems, including EMP-hardened equipment, satellite communications, and large fuselage-mounted antennas. Its large fuselage also allows for essential long-range antennas and miles of armored cabling while providing operational space for a flight crew and up to 100 mission staff working continuously. Twin-engine aircraft like the 777, despite their long range, cannot match this capacity. The requirement for four engines is equally critical. Four engines provide unmatched redundancy and survivability, ensuring the aircraft can complete its mission even if one fails. They also generate the enormous stable electrical power needed to run advanced military and communication systems, something twin-engine jets cannot deliver reliably. Finally, using pre-owned jumbo jet airframes offers both stability and cost-effectiveness. Both VC-25B and E-4B programs involve complex multi-year retrofits, and selecting a proven platform reduces technical risk. Although no longer in production, acquiring retired VIP or white tail jets is financially prudent, often costing only a fraction of a new airframe and avoiding the risks of building an entirely new aircraft from a closed production line. In the right hands, the Boeing 747 does more than fly, it preserves the lives and power of an entire nation.